Hey, Professor David Stuckler here, Fast Track grad. I get so many students asking me, hey, Prof, what's the right way to use AI? How can I tap its power to not only finish my assignments fast and get the big projects done, but really get an unfair advantage in my career and yet still do it in an ethical, clean way? Not an easy question and one honestly I've shied away from because the principles that I've really pushed and espoused here at Fast Track have been to teach you and show you how to do things in the right way through mentorship and guidance so you've got the skills, the real human skills yourself, but then at certain points in the process you could drop in AI to really accelerate and fly even faster, but always starting from the point of knowing first how to do it yourself. So I've been a little dissatisfied with a lot of the tools for several reasons. Some of them, this tool is good at reading. Maybe this tool is good at helping you edit. Another tool can help you put together a presentation. And so quietly I've been sifting through tools in the background because I get so many students asking me about this, trying to separate the wheat from the chaff and make smart recommendations for how to use this because we really are entering a new era. The times where back in the prehistoric period where I was where you might search Google Scholar are kind of gone. I mean the new Google Scholar is searching through AI instruments. And so what I've been quietly doing in the background is actually collaborating and working with some of these AI tools to try to make them better, more fit for task. And I'm really excited to share with you one today that offers a holistic interface, aims to be a one-stop shop so you don't have to cobble together bits and pieces and strengths of AI from different systems. So what I'm gonna to do today is show you this tool called Pop AI, and I'm gonna show you four main ways that I think it can add a lot of value already now, and that is around keyword searches, especially for systematic reviews, writing better emails and engaging, navigating different difficult relationships with supervisors. Uh, this is especially important if there's been miscommunications or if English isn't your first language. Creating quick presentations that I've done myself to save a whole bunch of time teaching and also presenting my research at conferences. And the fourth and final way is to really chat and engage with difficult documents in your field. Really help you probe them for the information that you want and understand things that's especially important if you're just starting out in your field. So let's dive straight in. Along the way, I'm gonna show you kind of the landmines not to step into and the unethical ways, the wrong ways to use AI. This is gonna be relevant not just to pop AI, any AI tool you use out there. Again, I'm not wedded to any of these tools. I've just happened to work in the background with this tool to try to make it better. But again, like what I've said, the, the right and wrong way that we're gonna cover in this video is gonna be relevant to all the tools that are out there. Okay, let's dive in. Um, so what you're gonna find with Pop AI is a general template with a lot of different options available to you. You can see here they've got, if you wanna make images, if you wanna write a blog, lots of things you can do. You wanna go straight to this academic tab, which I've already got pulled up for you here. And it offers you a few off the shelf options, things that you may or may not ever use, like turn equations into LaTeX. This is particularly important for those of you math and science, wanting to format your manuscript or document into LaTeX. This can save you a ton of time. But what I really wanna highlight are those main uses I spoke of before. So first of these, keyword searches by search intent. One major application that students do that I work with is we often will look for keyword variants of keywords in our systematic reviews. So let me give you an example of one that I've been working with and that's on a systematic review about leadership. And what's really great here is you can go and harvest keyword variants, themes and ideas from existing papers. But what this does is it starts kind of doing a factor analysis of the themes, dominant themes in academic literature around leadership. And I think this is pretty nice because this takes leadership and breaks it into not not just iterations and derivatives, but also the concepts around it that you need, might need to be sure that you capture. Um, so leadership skills development is one theme factored into leadership styles. This turned out to be particularly important in one review we were doing. And right, the student going in wasn't really aware of all these different styles. Knew about transformation leadership, but hadn't thought about democratic leadership or even laissez-faire leadership. So that was particularly helpful and something that in searching for leadership styles and setting up our keywords and keywords word variants, we ended up making sure we specifically sought to look for. Other contexts, leadership business, leadership qualities, but this really helped zoom in like a laser beam on the specific substantive components of leadership that we wanted to hone in on in, in the search. So again, I think this is a particularly powerful value of this tool. Let me just go back now. And, and what you can see here again is 
it, it promises to be this one-stop shop, which I think is nice. You don't have to go into say chat GPT or other sites because actually, as you're going to see here in a second, chat GPT is integrated, but in a smart way. What I had been doing in the background in chat GPT was making custom GPTs to edit in the way that I like so that the GPT could learn from my writing style in academic writing. And then my students didn't have to use a sophisticated prompt. They could put in a prompt and get the edits in the way that I had already engineered the prompt to be pretty good. So this is pretty nice here in an email corrector for a professional. So I'm gonna write here a pretty bad email that I sometimes get from students and, and see what it comes up with, Ben. I don't know, this is, this is Ben, I'm gonna call him like dumb Ben because he hasn't really tapped the power of AI tools to write and he's just panicking because he hasn't gotten the support he needed. Okay, and, um, and you can see it already turns this into a, a much better written email very, very quickly, written in a formal yet appropriate academic style. <laughs> it even gets the title for you. I would recommend all of you do this. And, and this is easier than ChatGPT because it's already been engineered to write this in the way uh, that you need in the right tone that's gonna fit well with professors like myself who you want to stay on a good footing with. Now you can see here you've got standard here and you've got different options in the corner for what you can choose uh, for writing with. And uh, I like to go with standard, it's good enough. You also have options to do tap into the power of different GPT. So you don't need a sub separate subscription for chat GPT because its power is already built in here. Hope, hope that makes sense. Okay, let me come back and show you the third application. When I, when I did this, I was really, really amazed by it. It, it was pretty cool. It, it was in, in creating a presentation. I went here and I did, for me, lesson material slides lives because I wanted to create a quick lecture on poverty and HIV that I was doing, but you can do this from scratch and you can actually load up in your research and your data and it will create a really nice presentation. And what this can do is it can do an AI search for images or AI generation. And I like using AI search here. Now, the difference between the free version and the pro version here is gonna be, you see here, you can use ChatGPT, you can set the model that you wanted to use here. The difference here, pro is it's gonna be using more advanced AI tools, but the free version still has a ton of power. And the point is with these AI tools is if it can get 70% done of what you need to do, that saved you. If something that would take you three hours, now you can get done in, in just one hour. That's an incredible time saving. I like to specify this to say I want it to be brief because I like my presentations to speak with figures. I don't want people just reading the presentation next to me. I want them focusing on me. And so I like that I can prime that. I prime mine to student, um, but as you can see, it's got lots of different options and applications, but we want kind of educational slides, students. So this is already optimized. I like to keep my slides short. So here, I've just put this very broadly, poverty and HIV in developing countries. And here we go. This is gonna take a second. And, and what's pretty cool is it actually follows the recommendation, if you follow my course in making winning presentations, to create an outline first and then convert that outline into slides. The developers here have embedded the logic of the right way to develop a presentation. And that is, again, another value add here. I think AI tools, the developers just gotta drop in AI tools, but they don't understand kind of the logic in right way that it should be constructed from the inside out. And that's why you get some funny, incoherent things that are just not, not usable. Here we go. Out, so we've got the outline ready. And if you're happy with the outline, you can tweak the outline. I mean, this is pretty cool. It came up with something, the SWOT analysis that I hadn't even thought to put in there. And you see this, this is actually pretty good details. I mean, here it's got uh, some other stuff that are ideas that I can go lecture on how HIV hinders economic growth. It's a really nice framework that, that has come up with around the economic costs of HIV. So again, it's gonna create some clean slides. You will have to figure, go and edit this manually yourself, but it's gonna save some time. You've got a well-structured outline that looks clean, that's coherent, nice template that you can then take over into PowerPoint and manipulate yourself. I was able to do this for my class, but I saved me 70% you know, of the time what I needed. This works really well for research presentations as well. Okay, 
Let me get to the last application that I, I want, want to share with you here. Let's go here and uh, it's this tool here you can see on the left called Chat with Document. It gives you, I mean, it's not too complicated here. Uh, it gives you the instructions of what, what you need, but you can drag and drop and upload a full file here. So let me do that. Let me just switch my screen over and pull that over. So now you can see I've just dropped in the document and it's loading up here. And as I've got the document in, it's nice because it strips out the images that you can then easily take and, and manipulate later as needed. But it also is gonna come and give you a very no nonsense summary. And again, you can adjust and you can even translate this in house for yourself, which is pretty cool if you're struggling with the document create a summary, you can turn it into a presentation like was done before. Um, what I like to do though is here, you can capture and ask specific things. I like interrogating these. It gives you primes, some questions that you might wanna ask it. What are some primary green finance products? Well, I actually have a student who's asking me uh, just today, hey, I wanna do a thesis on green finance, but I don't really know what to focus on. So let's take a recent review paper and ask it about that. And here I can already see some different areas that are really fascinating, things I didn't even know about and in skimming the paper I hadn't caught quickly, like this idea of green bank assurance, these banks merging with insurance. Cool sector, this ended up being a cool idea to focus on on the thesis. Uh, another one here for interrogating the document. This is really great if you're just feeling, you got an article and you feel like a cookie monster with a blinking light and you're just blanking out in front of it. Really cool way to get unstuck. Another one is say, hey, can you summarize potential research gaps that would be good for a master's thesis that this article might suggest? And you can see what it begins to come up with we're tapping the power of a GPT, but engaging with our document for our specific purposes. It's already been primed to be more specific to what you need as a researcher. It's cool, I, I like this on performance indicators for green finance initiatives. Great topic idea. And this is, again, not blue skies from coming from ChatGPT, it's more targeted because it's tapping the power of these articles that, that you load in here. And I especially recommend doing this with a review article. This is saying a gap that looks for a population gap. This is looking at the role of regulation and regulatory frameworks. I've actually got another student working on that. Human capital development, social justice, comparative studies, really great ideas are emerging here. Um, okay, I wanna come back and show you what not to do. What not to do. So what not to do with uh, AI is to, to come back into its templates and try to have it write things for you. This, I, I find here, this educational writing, I don't want you to do human written, 100% unique essay writing, doesn't work. It says plagiarism free, doesn't work. It's not plagiarism free. This is gonna get you into trouble. I know the developers are working on that, but I want you guys, my principle is to always have you know how to do things the right way and then use AI to do it better. Same thing, the research proposal, this is still a little thin, it's still developing, but um, we're trying to embed our gift method that you know from some of my other videos on crafting a winning research proposal so that all the nuts and bolts are there and that's the power of custom GPTs built into a unified uh, interface. So. Don't take essays directly writing. You need to always be sure that you've done the first pass of the writing yourself, and then maybe you integrate edits. The other thing that currently is underway is developing a writing coach, which I think is one of the, the powerful impacts of GPTs right now. That's something that's currently missing from this tool, but I'm told is underway. So that's it. That's Pop AI, a tool that I'm personally using and recommending to my students. Hope you get a lot of value out of it. We've got discount codes in the links below. And again, join me in my exclusive Facebook group, Fast Track Grad. We're doing more live workshops and we're reviewing more AI tools to help you continue to separate the wheat from the chaff and use AI in the right way. I'll see you there.